Hello, hello, Mr. Scott again. Uh, we are now on chapter number six. It's rational uh, equations and expressions. Um, this is actually a relatively short uh, chapter, and I'm not even going to do all of the questions because just like with radicals, it gets pretty samey. So we'll just bounce around the sheet here. Um, if you've seen the other videos I've done here, you'll, of course, kind of roll your eyes at my preamble here. But I say at the beginning of every video, if you haven't already done these questions, given at least one of them, or given at least all of them, at least one try, you know, even if you get it right, get it wrong, whatever, at least give it a try is all I'm trying to say here. Um, if you haven't already done that, don't watch this video. Like, don't, don't watch it right now because I want you to actually give each of these a try before you watch this video. Because if you watch this video without actually trying any of these questions, you're going to have a really bad time. You're not going to be able to follow along what I'm doing and be like, okay, what, what is he talking about? So at least give them a try. That way you'll actually remember them going forward. Anyway, let's start with question number 1b. I'm going to skip 1a because it's a little bit too simple. But 1b says 16x squared minus 25 divided by 12x minus 15. Remember with rationals, the rule is always, always, always factor and factor and factor. Get rid of everything. Just factor it all down. See what it's going to give you. Top of this fraction right here, we have 16x squared minus 25. That's a difference of squares. 16x squared, you can take the square root of that and 25, you can take the square root of that. So whenever you have a difference, or in other words, a subtraction of two squares, you can factor this quite easily. Well, the square root of 16x squared is just going to be 4x, and the square root of 25 is just going to be 5. So 16x squared minus 25 could be factored to 4x minus 5 times its conjugate, which is 4x plus 5. Now for the denominator, that is not a difference of squares in the denominator, neither 12x nor 15 is a perfect square. Um, but what we can do on the bottom there is you could factor 3 out of both of those. So if you factor a 3 out of 12, it's going to leave you with 4x. And if you factor a 3 out of minus 15, it's going to give you minus 5. Now the last thing you're going to notice here is we have 3 times 4x minus 5 on the bottom and 4x minus 5 times 4x plus 5 on the top. Uh, so with a 4x minus 5 on the top and a 4x minus 5 on the bottom, those are going to cancel out. So you're going to be left with 4x plus 5 divided by 3. So just a quick disclaimer with that last question there. Usually when we simplify something like this, we like to state our NPVs, in other words our non-permissible values. Uh, it's a good practice to always do this, but I didn't list them because it says just simplify. It doesn't say state the NPVs. Still, like I said though, it should be something you do anyway, whether it states it or not. But just because it doesn't say to do so until question number four, I'm just going to glance over it for now. We can wait till then before we start talking about that. Anyway, what we are going to do is we're going to do question two, part B, and I chose this one because there's quite a lot going on with it. Um, we'll start by factoring this fraction on the left here. If you notice the one on the top, the numerator here, that's a difference of squares. So we can actually factor a squared minus 16 by writing it as a minus 4 times a plus 4. Now as for the denominator there, oop, there we are, as for the denominator, that looks like a difference of squares, but the trouble is that 16a. You can't take the square root of 16a, you just get 4 and then something else, which wouldn't really work so well. Um, but it looks like a difference of squares, it's just not. But the best we can do is we can factor out a 4a from both of those. So if we factor a 4a out of both of those, 4a, if we took that out of 16a, is just going to give us 4. Uh, and then if we took a 4a out of 4a squared, that's just going to leave us with an a. So that's all we can really factor on that one right there. So we'll move over to the other side. Um, moving over to this one, on the top there, what we could factor out is we could factor out a 2a squared from both of those. We could take a 2a squared out of this and a 2a squared out of that. So we can go 2a squared times, and if we took a 2a squared out of, sorry, 2a to the power of 3, that's just going to leave us with an a. And then if we took a 2a squared out of 6a squared, it's going to give us plus 3. Now, as for the denominator there, that's just a classic trinomial. Uh, so we have a sum of 7 and a product of 12. Well, that's just going to be 4 and 3. So it'll be a plus 4 times a plus 3. 
So now that whole equation is completely factored, we have a multiplication, which means we just multiply the tops together and the bottoms together. So it's almost like we can just consider this one big fraction. I usually connect them with a dotted line just like that. Uh, and then we can cancel out anything that's common between the two. Well, we have an a plus 4 here and an a plus 4 here, so we can cancel those out. We have an a plus 3 here and an a plus 3 here, so we'll cancel those out. But the only other thing that's kind of interesting is this a minus 4 and this 4 minus a. It's been a long time since we've looked at something like this, but when we have an a minus 4 and then the backwards version of this where we have 4 minus a, these will cancel out, but it won't cancel out perfectly. We're going to be left with a negative 1. If you're not too sure why, I suggest you look back through your book. Um, it takes a little while to explain, so I'm not going to mention it right now, but just take my word for it. A minus 4 divided by 4 minus A will make a negative 1 on the top. So all we're left with, if we look at the whole big picture here, uh, it's going to be negative 1 times 2A squared, which is going to be negative 2A squared, over, and the only thing left on the bottom is 4A. But even that, what we have left over, we can still simplify that even further. Negative 2 divided by 4 is going to give us negative 1 half. And then a squared divided by a is just going to leave us with an a. So even better than that, we can write it as negative a over 2. And that is now completely simplified. Okay, so I'm going to jump way ahead now to question 3, part c. Uh, we're asked to subtract these two rational expressions together. Remember when you subtract any kind of fraction, you need to have the same denominator on both sides. First though, let's always start by factoring y squared minus 20. That almost looks like a difference of squares, but it's not, so we can't really do anything with that. Uh, so we'll just leave that alone, that y squared minus 20. But on the bottom there, y squared minus 4, that is a difference of squares. Square root of y squared is just y. Square root of 4 is 2, so we have y minus 2 times y plus 2. And we're subtracting our original thing there, which is already factored, y minus 2 over y plus 2. Now, if I just put brackets around this, it doesn't really change anything. It just changes kind of the way it looks here. But you can see, in order to subtract these two things together, this one is going to need a y minus 2 attached onto it. This already has a y plus 2, just like this one. But this one needs a y minus 2 attached to it. So we might as well just grow this by putting a y minus 2 on the top and on the bottom. As long as you put it on the top and the bottom, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to change the way it looks. But now we can actually subtract this straight across. Um, got quite a bit of work to do here, though. So what we'll do first is I think we should probably multiply these two together. Uh, keep in mind, we're subtracting. So we're subtracting this entire thing. So it would be important to get this all together at first. Uh, so we're going to have y squared minus 20 over y minus 2 times y plus 2. And since this is all going to be combined, because they have the same denominator now, we won't worry about anything else on the bottom, but we'll make it minus. And now we'll expand this out. So it'll be y times y, which is y squared. And then y times minus 2, which is minus 2y. And then minus 2y times, or minus 2 times y, which would be another minus 2y. And then minus 2 times minus 2, which is plus 4. So with this now, because we have subtraction and this whole thing in brackets, just remember that the subtraction has to bounce its way through the entire uh, fraction piece right here. So this is actually going to give us y squared minus y squared, which those will cancel out, so we won't have any y squareds, um, minus 2y, or ra rather minus negative 2y, and then minus negative 2y. So that's going to give us minus 20 plus 2y, plus 2y, minus 4, all over y minus 2, times y plus 2. And if we're going to bring everything all back together here, we actually might want to make some more room up on the top here. It's kind of a longer question than I anticipated. Um, if we're going to bring everything all back together here, we're just going to want to collect our like terms and then see if we can go from there. There we go. So if we're going to collect our like terms, then minus 20 minus 4 is going to give us minus 24. Plus 2y plus 2y is going to give us plus 4y. And that is going to be over y minus 2 times y plus 2. Now I'm kind of suspicious with this little thing on the top here. I think we can factor out a 4 from both of these. That is going to give us... Um, and I want to rearrange this as well. I'll put the y in front, so I'll make it 4y minus 24. Just 
get rid of that there, but we'll take a four out of both of those. It'll make it four times y minus, take a four out of this, it'll make it six, over y minus two times y plus two. That last step there was kind of unnecessary. There wasn't really anything else we could do with it. I just saw that I could take a four out of both of those, so I did it anyway. But either one of these answers, whether you got this top one or this one that I've put in a box, both of those are acceptable answers. Okay, so we're almost done here. I'm gonna to skip to question 4C. And just a heads up, all these questions in question number four, they're all very, very similar. They can all be solved a similar way. But 4C, we have x over x minus two over x minus 2 equals x minus 6 over x minus 4. Now again when we have an equation we want to make sure both of our denominators are the same. So this one we're going to want to multiply by x minus 4 and this one we're going to want to multiply by x minus 2 on the top and the bottom. So this one will hit with x minus 4 on the top and the bottom this one will hit with x minus 2 on the top and the bottom. So what we're going to end up getting is we're going to get x times x minus 4 over x minus 2 times x minus 4 equals, and then this one will multiply by x minus 2 in the top and the bottom, so we'll have x minus 6 times x minus 2 over x minus 2 times x minus 4. Since this is an equation and we have the same denominator on both sides, the nice thing about this is we can now pretend that these denominators don't even exist at all. But we do want to remember what our non-permissible values were here. So in other words, the values of x that would make these denominators zero. It's really important that we remember that. As for the top, though, I think we should um, factor this all out. Uh, so this is going to be, or sorry, not factor, expand this all out. So this is going to be x times x minus 4, which is going to give us x squared minus 4x. And this is going to give us x times x, which is x squared x times minus 2, which is minus 2x, minus 6 times x, which is minus 6x, minus 6 times minus 2, which is plus 12. Okay, and guess who just dropped his pen? Anyway, let's uh, bring everything over to one side now. It'd be easier to take this and bring it over to the other side, so let's minus x squared from both sides and add 4x. So if we take away x squared from both sides, both of those x squareds are going to be cancelled out, but if we add 4x to both sides, we are going to have 0 equals, and remember the x squareds will cancel out, plus 4x minus 2x minus 6x plus 12. Be a great idea now to combine all of these together. Remember that is positive 4x there. It'd be a good idea to combine all these together. So I will start by giving ourselves a little bit more room here. Hold on. There we go. All right, so 4x minus 2x would give us 2x. 2x minus 6x is going to give us negative 4x. So we have 0 equals negative 4x plus 12. Now let's add 4x to both sides because we want to solve for x. It's going to give us 4x equals 12 and then divide by 4, x is going to be 3. So we have now solved the original problem. Remember the original problem being this. x is 3, but we have to list all of our restrictions. And we really should have been doing this for all these other questions too. It's just that this is the only one that actually told us to list the restrictions. So just remember our non-permissible values, and I guess I shouldn't have erased all those other ones there, but if you look back at what we started with, our non-permissible values would have been x is positive 2, because that would have made that equal to 0, and x is positive 4. So our non-permissible values are x cannot equal 2, and x cannot equal 4. And the good news is our answer is neither one of those numbers, so that means we were good. Okay, so the last question we're going to do is this word problem here where we're using two hoses to fill up a pool. One hose takes six hours, the other one takes 12 hours. We want to look for how much time it would take if those two hoses were both being used at the same time. Um, so we're going to have to make a distance speed time table on this. So just remember questions like this, we go D, S, T. This just gives us an opportunity to kind of keep all of our information straight. And then we also need to have two columns. And obviously we have two hoses, so we want to make one column for each hose. Um, let's call these two hoses hose A and hose B. So we've got hose A, yeah I went there, and hose B, uh, and we have to think about what their distance, speed, and time are going to be here. Well the distance in this case is kind of obscure. They're both filling up just one pool. Um, so since they're both filling up one pool, the distance is just going to be one pool for hose A and 
one pool for hose B. Um, as for the speed, we don't know what the speed is here, so let's just pass on that one for now. But we do know the amount of time it would take. It takes hose A 6 hours and hose B 12 hours. Now just a reminder, distance equals speed times time. So if we're looking for our speed, our speed is going to be distance over time. So if we just take our distance and divide it by our time, that's going to give us our speed. So our speed is going to be 1 over 6 for the first hose and 1 over 12 for the second hose. Now here's where things get a little obscure. We are looking for the amount of time it would take for both of these hoses working together to fill up one pool. So remember, distance equals speed times time. If we took our speed and multiplied it by an unknown amount of time, the amount of time, by the way, is going to be the same for both of these hoses. Uh, if we took our speed, times it by that time, and added it with the other one's speed, times by that same amount of time, it's going to give us our distance, which our distance is only going to be one full pool. This one was really obscure. Um, it's really just a matter of practicing, practicing these till you get it. But again, the idea is we are looking for a common time that is shared by both of these. They're both working together, so the time has to be common between the two. And working on their own, time is totally different than both of these. Anyway, to set this one up, we're going to want to say for the first hose, it was one-sixth times whatever amount of time we're looking for, plus one-twelfth times whatever amount of time we're looking for. So in other words, the speed of the first hose, which we know is 1 over 6, times the time is going to give us the distance or the amount of the pool that this hose is going to fill in that amount of time, and 1 twelfth, so this one's speed, times the same amount of time is going to tell us the amount of the pool that this hose, hose B, fills up in that same amount of time. Working together, given this amount of time that we're trying to solve for, we are going to fill up one pool. Okay, so I'm just giving ourselves a little bit more room here to solve this one. Um, so now we want to solve for our time in this case. 1 6 t plus 1 12 t equals 1. The t can just go on top of both of these, so we can just write this as um, t over 6 plus t over 12 equals 1. And remember, in order to add these together, we want them to have a common denominator. So if we have a common denominator, we can make this one have a common denominator of 12 by just multiplying by 2 over 2. So we can make that 2t over 12 plus t over 12 equals 1. And then to get rid of the divide by 12 on this side, we can just times by 12 on this side over here. So we're going to get 2t plus t equals 1 times 12 to get rid of the denominators here, which is just going to be 12. Well, t or 2t plus t is going to give us 3t, so we'll have 3t equals 12, divide by 3, and we're going to find our time is going to be 4. So in other words, working together, remember, on their own, it was 6 hours for hose A and 12 hours for hose B, but working together, the time is just going to be 4 hours. Anyway, so that wraps up chapter number 6, Rational Numbers. Um, hopefully that helps as well. Uh, this was a relatively straightforward unit in that every single kind of question was really done in the same way. The number one thing you need to remember is you have to always factor everything. Factor the numerator, factor the denominator, and then start doing your operations.